everyone, this is Rishi from The Growing Home and today I'm going to teach you how to build a mini pond. And here in Southern California we have a really dry climate so a lot of people think that they shouldn't put ponds in because they'll take more water than not having a pond. And I actually really encourage people in dry climates like Southern California to have small ponds just like this one here that we put in a year ago because in a dry climate it's very difficult for beneficial insects, for birds, for wildlife to find fresh drinking water. Especially if you think about suburban environments like this one, the only drinking, the only water that's available on a regular basis <clears throat> is swimming pool water. And we've all been in swimming pools and seen you know, the dead bees floating around and the other dead insects floating around because they drank fluorinated water. So if we can provide a little bit of fresh drinking water without chlorine, without any chemicals, just water, clean drinking water, then we can attract a lot of beneficial insects, birds, and other wildlife into our garden and give them some, because we're giving them something to drink. And so today what I'm going to show you is how to build a mini pond just like this one behind me. These are very, very simple to build. There's only just a few items that you need and I'm going to show you them in a second. And they will provide fresh water all year round and actually not really take that much water to maintain. Water actually has incredible insulation properties. If you think about living by the ocean, if you live by the ocean, the temperature is always regulated because you have this massive body of water next to you. So when you build a pond and you have this body of water, it's actually not going to evaporate that quickly because the water is going to insulate itself. And if you put it in a you know, nice shady location, you're also going to slow down evaporation and it can take very little water to maintain a mini pond like this all year. So let me show you now what we're going to need to put one of these together. So we just need a few items here to put together our mini pond. The first thing you're going to need is some kind of container that doesn't have any holes in it. So it could be as simple as a five gallon bucket. And I love these because you can get them for free from a lot of different restaurants that get ingredients in these. So you can just get, you don't have to buy it, you can get one of these for free. You can also use a container from the nursery like this one that doesn't have any holes in it. That works perfectly fine. And then we're going to need the plants and animals that we're actually going to put into the pond. So the two plants that I'm going to be using today, the first is water hyacinth. That's this one here. And water hyacinth is an amazing plant. These roots that hang down here, they actually excrete oxygen through, you know, out of the roots. And so what happens is that Beneficial microbes colonize the area around the roots and they eat up any nutrients that are in the water and feed the plant those nutrients. So this plant, water hyacinth, is going to act like our pond's filtration system and its pump. So when we use water hyacinth, we actually don't need to pump the water in the pond and it'll stay fresh and clean. The other plant that we're going to put in, which is really easy, is watercress. And this is a vegetable that you might have eaten before. And I just took a, a little bit of roots and cuttings from another pond that we have in the front yard. And watercress is going to provide some of the food for the fish that we're going to put in here. It's also going to be act as part of that water, water filtration system. And in the summer, it tends to spread out over the water surface and insulate the pond below so we have less evaporation. Both of these plants you'll be able to find at any pond store or any you know, fish supply store. Uh, these are very common. And the last thing that we'll need are just a few goldfish. And what the goldfish are going to do are they are going to provide the food for the plants to eat and they're just closing the loop of the system that we're creating in our pond. 
So the goldfish will eat the roots and eat the dead leaves and you know other matter in the pond. They'll defecate, they'll poop. That poop, that poop will then get taken up by these plants which will then grow more and then the fit feed the fish and the fish feed the plants. So we're creating this closed system so we'll never have to feed the goldfish. We'll never have to pump the water in the pond. This thing is pretty much uh, self-sustaining. All we might have to do once in, a, once in a while in the summer months is refill the pond with a few gallons of water. So that's all, there, all the parts to it. Now let me, I want to talk to you a little bit about choosing the location for your pond. So when you're choosing the location of your pond, there's basically two factors that you want to think about, okay? If you look at nature, where do ponds form? That's an important question. Ponds naturally form in low points. So if we have a slope, and that slope comes down to a point, then a pond will naturally form in that low point. So if you have a low point in your garden like this, then that's a good place to put a pond. Another thing that you can think about if you don't have a sink like that is where do you have some type of slope? So in our garden we had an area, we just have a very gentle slope in our backyard like this and it kind of flattens out as it comes toward the house. So in, when it rains or even when we irrigate, water naturally flows down this slope and collects here at the bottom. So I chose this pond that I showed you, I put right here in this location. And so this is part of the reason that I don't need to refill the pond so often because anytime it rains or even if I irrigate and there's a little bit of irrigation runoff, then that water naturally flows into the pond and refills. When you're putting your pond in like this, one thing you want to make sure of is that the pond is not above the ground level. So you don't want your pond, the top of your pond to be up here because then the water cannot flow into it. What you actually want to do is have it slightly below the grade of the land. So now as when water comes down, okay, it goes right into that pond and is able to fill up um, without any obstruction. Okay, so that's basics about placing the pond. And then you want to think about how you're going to provide a little bit of shade so you're not losing um, so much water to evaporation. And also because there's a lot of great plants that you can put in your pond that need a little bit of shade. So first thing you want to know is which direction is south. Okay, because if whatever direction is facing south, that's where you're going to have the strongest sun. And especially on the southwest is where you're going to have the strongest sun. So if my sun is over here, if this is the south direction, then I want to plant a tree or a bush or some kind of, you know, somewhat tall plant here so that the sun rays are blocked out by that tree or that bush or that plant and are going to provide a little bit of shade for our pond, keep the water from heating up too much and giving us a nice little habitat for the, pond, the plants and the fish in the pond. Okay, so now let me show you how, we actually going to, how we're actually going to put this thing together. The first step to putting your pond in is to you know, decide where you're going to put your, your bucket. Um, you can actually just leave this above ground too and keep it as a patio pond. Um, and if you're going to dig it in, you want to make sure when you're digging it in that the top, the rim of the bucket is level. Okay, so you're going to use just a level like this and place it on the top of the bucket and try to make sure it's as level as possible when you sink it into the ground. So you'll check in a few different directions and find that level point. For the demonstration I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to leave it like this above ground, okay? So your first step is going to be 
to just fill your bucket. You're going to need to do this 24 hours ahead of when you put the plants or the fish into the bucket. The reason is, is that municipal water most of the time is going to contain chlorine. And if you put your fish into chlorinated water, they're going to die. So we fill the bucket up ahead of time. And we fill the bucket up ahead of time and let it let the chlorine gas off for the next 24 hours. And after 24 hours, the chlorine will be gone from the water and it's, it'll be okay for us to add the fish in. So I'm just going to fill this up right now and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I've let the water sit out for 24 hours now, so the chlorine should have gassed off. And now all I really have to do is add the different items into the pond, okay? So I'm going to add my water hyacinth. Again, that's my filtration system. That's also my oxygenation system. So I don't need a, a pump for this. Then I'm going to add my water cress. And this will just float also on the top of the water. So just like that, I can kind of maybe dress the water cress over the water hyacinth to, so it can take advantage of some of the water hyacinth's flotation properties. And then I'm going to add my fish. The important thing when you're adding your fish in is that the water that the fish are in before you add them and the water that you're going to add them to are at the same temperature because if there's too much of a temperature change, you can end up killing your fish. When you buy the fish at your local pet store, they'll usually give them to you in a plastic bag. So what you can do is you just take that plastic bag with the fish in it and leave it floating in your pond. It'll take about 15 minutes for the temperature in the bag and the temperature in the bucket to equalize and then you can add the fish to the water. Make sure when you buy your fish, you bring them home and you put them into your bucket within about 45 minutes because they'll run out of oxygen in their little bag if you just leave them in there and they'll die. So have this ready and then come bring the fish and add them into your bucket. I left my bowl of water and fish outside along with the bucket so that the temperatures could equalize. So now all I'm going to do is add the fish and the water into my bucket. So now we're at the last step. I'm just going to add my fish in here. My pond is ready. The water hyacinth is going to provide my filtration and my oxygenation. It's going to provide food for the fish. The watercress is also going to provide food for the fish. The fish are also going to eat any mosquito larvae that come into here. So I'm not going to be creating a mosquito breeding ground. And I have this very nice, elegant closed loop system. And I'm providing, the, you know, the main function here is I'm providing water for wildlife, for beneficial insects. And bringing those into my garden is going to help the rest of my garden grow. They're going to keep aphids off. They're going to keep pests, other pest bugs off. And and they'll be happy that they've come to my garden and they found a fresh, clean water drinking supply. Hi, thanks for watching this video. My name is Rishi Kumar and I'm a member of The Growing Club. The Growing Club is a group of individuals and small businesses in Los Angeles working together to create a more equitable and sustainable future. Every month, The Growing Club works to educate our members, our local community, and our global community on how to grow food sustainably, regenerate our urban and suburban ecosystems, and create supportive and strong communities. Every month, we offer educational community events here in Los Angeles and produce free online learning materials available to anyone. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please consider joining The Growing Club. Your monthly contribution will help create more videos like this one available to anyone worldwide for free. To join, 
head to thegrowingclub.com and see how you can become part of our growing community.